Hey guys and welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, click that subscribe button and if you're a returning subscriber, welcome back and thanks for watching this video. So today guys, I've got a different kind of video for you guys. I decided that I wanted to um, introduce a more educational section um, on my YouTube channel where I actually sit down and go into depth and explain certain things and um, this first episode on this series is going to be about acrylic application and um, I made this the first video in the series because I realized there's a lot of things that th I mean this is one main thing that um, a lot of you guys DM me asking me about for more tips to improve acrylic application so I just thought that I would um, do a general video about it and um, give you guys some advice and some tips and the key aspects to getting good application so as you guys can see this video is um, in real time I haven't sped it up and I just went back to one of my old footage of me doing acrylic application sometimes my application is not the best like sometimes i'm rushing but overall generally i would say i have improved significantly with my acrylic application if you date back to one of the first videos i uploaded here i have significantly improved and my methods make more sense and you know with experience you pick up a lot of things and gradually um, that's caused my application to become more neater, more better, and also I'm wasting less acrylic. Okay, so um, I'm going to go into the steps. Um, it's not going to be ranked in order because I'm just going to think of them off the top of my head. But um, I hope you guys get a lot of information for this video. If you do have any questions, please comment them down below. And I will try my best to answer them to the best of my abilities. But yeah, guys, hope you guys enjoy this video. Okay, so guys, my first point um, is as a beginner, okay, this video is catered towards beginners, advanced, whatever, you know, anybody that needs help with acrylic application or some tips. But I would say as a beginner, don't focus too much on a bead method. I've said this in previous videos before, and I feel like people are not understanding that as a beginner, you don't expect yourself to have a um, bead method and stick to it. In the beginning, I struggled with, for example, free bead method, two bead method. I was listening to all these YouTube videos saying you have to use a three bead method. And that all depends on the size of the beads and the consistency of the beads. So I'd say don't focus on a bead method, focus on building up the nail adequately because you can choose a three bead method and not build up the nail adequately, but then use, for example, five beads and then the structure of the nail is better. So don't limit yourself um in terms of the beads that you use just make sure that you're using enough to cover the nail and build the nail structure well enough that's number one number two you need to make sure that you get the consistency of the acrylic correct and i've said this before in one of my previous videos i'll make sure i um, put all my acrylic application videos linked in the eye is it the eye the cards above I don't even know the term but I'll make sure that it pops up above um, and I'll link them down in the description below so you guys can have some reference point but I always say this in terms of you need to make sure that your liquid to powder ratio is good so if you haven't got that down um, I'll see if I can make that my next video no promises guys but I'll see if I can make that my next video or I know for a fact it will be a video because it's key to um, get into grips with your application. So liquid to powder ratio, like I was saying, is important in terms of getting your bead consistency correct, which will aid in the betterment of your acrylic application. If you don't um, get the correct ratio, 
that can either cause your beads to be too runny or too dry and you can see that in some of my beads that i pick up um in this video um when i'm doing my application but because i've been doing this i know how to work with runnier beads or drier beads but as a beginner it would be harder um to control those kind of beads because you wouldn't be familiar with it so that's why it's good as a beginner to make sure that you know um your liquid to powder ratio depending on the size of the bead if you're going to use a bigger bead you're going to need more liquid if you're going to use a smaller bead i mean if you're trying to pick up a smaller bead you use less liquid and that's the kind of method that you need to go by in order to ensure that you are picking up the right size bead with the right um consistency and also how you angle your brush in the powder also contributes significantly to the shape of the bead and the size of the bead that will all be demonstrated in a liquid to powder ratio beading video basically um but this video is basically just the introduction of this topic i'm just going to call it episode one of this whole um series of getting to grips with um acrylic application okay i think that was point two point three is the equipment that you're using sorry guys we're gonna go off topic side note i had this um someone comment on my channel that um on one of my i forgot what video it was but um in that video i remember saying invest in good products and the girl was like oh um i invest in cheap powders but a good acrylic and then mix them with the um mix the bad powders with the, something along those lines i can don't quote me guys i can't remember but it's like guys don't cheat your way out of it yeah like i said the products you use matter and i don't think a lot of people get to understand that like um like i said i do receive a, a bit of dms about um for example equipment and things that they're doing wrong and i always um find it follow the problem back to the products that they're using like if you guys if you're buying products like powders from aliexpress guys two pound powders what is it whatever it is five dollar powders from aliexpress you cannot expect the a, a good outcome guys like you just have to face the truth i understand some people that are starting off you might not have enough money or whatever um you know you you might not have enough to invest in the good powders but think about it as starting small when you start off you don't have to buy 16 different colors you can literally buy two or three good powders that you can use to practice with i'd say find a good nail supply store or find a good website online and um, there's literally like tens and twenties worth that doesn't even make sense there's like okay there's quite a few let's just say there's quite a few websites online which you can get good powders from whether you're in the uk canada us i'm not too sure about countries outside of europe and us and canada but even then i'm still sure there'll be a good nail supply store for you to get powders from that really aids in um how your acrylic application will be my favorite companies to use are nail nails glitter bells um near secret i use some powders from hollywood nail supply i use miss you powders um i use powders from acrylics like you need to make sure that you you're using good powders from good companies with good ingredients because that also um aids in the betterment of your acrylic application so still on the topic of products monomer monomer is a big issue um in the nail community and there's so much controversy on 
for example, using um, illegal products such as MMA. Personally, as a um, nail tech in the UK, I use EMA, which is ethyl methacrylate. Um, I know MMA in the UK is illegal. I know in, in a lot of states in America it's illegal, but I have heard of some um, American nail techs using MMA. My personal advice is to stay within the scope of legal products such as EMA and use that because products such as MMA can cause reactions to your client and also MMA is not meant for nail acrylic, it's um, dental acrylic. So EMA is more suited to um, nail products. So that's another thing. And the thing is with starting out this is what i'm saying with the beginning a lot of people um like i said may not have the funds to purchase ema ema is um quite pricey um and a lot of people might not have the funds to purchase um ema but i'd say save up and invest one thing about it is you don't want to rush it get bad products and have a bad outcome you want to make sure that you're giving yourself the best possible start to your nail journey so invest in a good ema monomer i use tnbl um it's a uk brand based in birmingham i use their ultra adhesion violet monomer i've been using that for what a year now just over a year maybe pushing two years now it's what's worked best for me it doesn't um, it's not a fast setting monomer, so it allows me time to work with the bead. Moving on to my next point about the different types of monomers and how they can aid in your acrylic application. So there's several different types of monomers, slow setting monomers, you know, regular setting and fast setting monomers, as well as monomers that are like ultra adhesion like mine. There's, there's, there's an extensive list, basically. I'm not going to go through all of it. But there's um, a lot of monomers to choose from. And I went through about four different companies, four, maybe five different companies. Tried Mia Secret, tried um, Glitter Bells, tried CND, tried, um, is it Glitter Planet, Glitter Rama? What's that company? I can't remember. It's Glitter something. I tried, oh, it, I think it's Glam and Glitz actually. Um, I've tried so many and ended up to like tnbl more so starting out try different monomers see which monomers work best with your powders some monomers work great with the powders of the same company like for example glitter bell monomer would be more k catered to glitter bell powders um, that works for some um, companies and it doesn't work for others but it's like some powders work good all around with all all kinds of powders I mean some monomers work well with like generally all powders um, I'm not using glitter bars as an example glitter bars is a good monomer it does work with quite a few powders but that's just an example um, but some monomers that I've tried, I've, I've tried a lot, guys. If you've bought some from eBay, like, doing, like, <laughs> doing nails for this long, you try all sorts of things to see what kind of works for you. And that's the best thing to do, guys. Try, try and try until you find out what works the best for you. And try out, for example, the different setting monomers. As a beginner, I'd say that go for a slower setting monomer because you want to get to grips with being able to work the bead down the nail properly with adequate time without it drying fast that's another um dm i get a lot oh, i don't have enough time to work with the monomer it dries fast and lumpy and then i'm gonna have to keep layering it and it builds up and it gets bumpy and i have to foul forever that's just a rough like um a rough like example of dms that i get um and comments as well like your application ends up being bumpy because the monomer is setting too fast or the powder the bead is setting too fast 
and that could be due to most likely your mo number but some powders are very grainy and dry so that's why i'm saying invest in good powders as well but mainly that would be coming from the monomer because if you're getting a fast setting monomer you are not going to have time to work with the bead fast setting monomers are for pros even i don't use a fast setting monomer guys it's for pros that you know preferably they're using a one bead method so they're getting the nails done fast like that's the kind of monomer that they use in the the chop shops like the nail chop shops and they be doing the thinnest layer of acrylic one bead method and they're done because they're trying to get your nails done in 30 minutes 45 minutes max and have you out of the door but nail technicians that want to take their time and make sure their application is really good and up to scratch most likely they are using um what's it called slower setting monomers so that's one thing you want to really um, invest in a good monomer. Um, moving on to my final point is the brush, guys. Invest in a good Kalinsky brush. I feel like I'm going to run out of time. Invest in a good Kalinsky brush, guys, because if you don't, that's really going to severely affect your application as this will um, hinder, like, the the smoothness of like the acrylic i'm not explaining it well but it will hinder for example um you being able to wipe your brush clean properly it will make sure i mean it will um disrupt when you're picking up beads because if your brush is in 100 percent kalinsky that's how when you're wiping it off it's not wiping off properly acrylic will get stuck in it it will harden and then acrylic will continuously build up in your brush and once the acrylic is building up in your brush it's limiting the free flow and the the fluid movement of those bristles to make sure that your application is smooth so i understand like i said some people might not have enough funds to invest in those kind of things but i feel like it's a priority and it should be up there brushes are quite expensive nowadays I think I paid £22 for my brush. I know some brushes in America are over $30. So I understand. But it's a thing where you have to invest in those kind of things in order to bring the best um, outcome. And just to, you know, optimise the best acrylic application that you can achieve. So guys, in a short, that's it for this video. I will go into depth in more videos and... Um, in the next episode of this um series i still don't know what to call it yet guys but um this education series um i will go into the next um i will go into more detail next time um i don't know what the next part is going to be so guys stay tuned if you have any specific topics that you want me to touch on please do let me know in the comments i hope you guys have enjoyed this video if you have click that thumbs up um, share this video to anyone you think that will need it and i will see you guys in my next video guys bye